Hello, I'm Victoria Stillwell, dog behavior expert from It's Me or the Dog and founder of the Victoria Stillwell Academy for Dog Training and Behavior. Today, I'm going to be looking at some of the videos you've sent in of your dogs. First, here's little G, a dog whose separation anxiety is near instant. So hi, Victoria. This is my other dog, his name is little G. The only problem that I have that I have not been able to conquer is this one. And he will do this until he gets sick. I've tried to have a doctor, like a vet, help me. The only solution that I've found is having a babysitter help me with him. Little G looks like he's getting very anxious on separation. And really, the worst separation anxiety happens within the first 30 minutes of you leaving. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, as soon as you go out, he is starting to whine and bark. And you say that he'll whine and he'll bark himself till he throws up. Um, and that's just, I mean, that is just, that's very upsetting. The desire to seek reattachment is so strong with these dogs that they have to do something. There's so much energy, so much nervous energy that they have to do something. What can you do about it? it? It's quite involved. What you can do right now, you have to start independence training inside the home. And this gets uh, your dog used to being a little apart from you, even when you're there. So that does mean when you go to the bathroom, you close the door and the dog doesn't come in with you. If you go into a certain room or your bedroom, you close the door for a bit so the dog doesn't come in with you. And you start that independence training. The separation anxiety bit when it when you have the whole modification plan as well with that is that it's basically teaching the dog that when you go out it's okay you will come back in and so we start doing a whole load of things we desensitize dogs to triggers things like picking up your keys and putting your coat doesn't always mean that you're going out actually if you pick up your keys you actually go and sit in front of your television and uh, watch tv so these triggers that have always meant she's leaving now don't mean you're leaving. And then when you do, if you do go out, you literally go out the door and come right back in, regardless of what the dog is doing. Can you do that 20, 30, 40, 50 times? Yes, I'm saying in one go. Dog will finally go, oh gosh, I'm tired, exhausted, and go and lie down. I'm not saying that you have to do that all the time. I'm just saying it's how we start it. So I would, I would tell you um, and encourage you to do that. Um, because there are definitely things that you can do to, to help little G cope. Next is Nyla, whose leash biting on walks makes her difficult to control. Goodness. Oh gosh. Not only is Nyla very large, she is very strong. She is reactive as she walks past the fence because obviously she can't see the dogs through the fence, but she can hear them. And there's that frustration. She's biting the leash out of frustration because she wants to get to the other dog and you're pulling her away. Part of when we talk about behavior modification and when we work with, with tricky behaviors like this is that if we don't put the dog in the situation, there is less likely for reinforcement. When you know you go to certain places, the dog knows that they can practice the behavior. The dog knows that there's another dog behind the fence. It's almost like they gear up for it. it makes it really even harder for that behavior to go into extinction. But go into extinction, it must. So first of all, we're gonna practice avoidance with this by not taking her into areas. But I think you need to teach her a skill. So what happens when we have behaviors like this that seem to be really, really difficult to stop? We teach a dog a different skill. So, for example, I'm walking my dog and it reacts towards other dogs, like Nyla's doing. What I'll do is that um, I'm gonna teach her the go find it skill. I'll put some food on the floor or I'll play a game with her and they only happen when she sees other dogs, right? So she sees another dog, instead of her going, Arr, it gives her a choice because that energy's got to go somewhere. Now I notice that she's got a, a head halter on. Uh, I'm not a big fan of head halters. I do understand why people with very large dogs use them because Great Danes are very, very powerful. It's hard 
to not be pulled over by them. But try a chest-led harness, because I think maybe part of the frustration is she's losing control of her own head. This is a tough one. Get a trainer in to help you with this, because this is something that, that is hard to tackle by yourself. You definitely need help with this one. Finally, Luna, who destroys the house when left unattended. That is some destruction. Did you say that she does that just when you went to go out to get milk? That is a lot of chewing in a very quick amount of time. One of the ways that dogs can kind of relieve their frustration and their anxiety is by chewing. I see that she's not in a crate. Some people will put their dogs that do have separation issues in a crate. Oh, a crate yeah. for a dog like this? Many dogs that do have issues like this do not do well in crates because you're confining them even more and that makes them even more anxious. So uh, what I found best with these dogs is to not crate them, um, but to use a baby gate and confine them in an area like the kitchen, for example, where they can do less damage. And then I provide them with toys. I provide them with some toys that you can put food inside and that they, instead of like redirecting onto cushions and things like that, that your dog has done, they can get the food from inside the toy and spend time working out how to do it. And you can put food in there, you can put it in the freezer, you can put it in the fridge, make it nice and cold or ice it. And sometimes it takes a long time for the dog to work out to get the food, but the dog's not even gonna touch the food until it, it, it feels more comfortable. And you find a lot of dogs that have anxiety like this won't even be bothered with food when you leave. So I do feel like with behaviors that are as intense as this, you do need professional help because separation anxiety slash separation issues, they uh, take a while and they take expertise from an expert to come help you. I have trainers, they're called VSPDTs, Victoria Stowell Positively Dog Trainers, and you can find them at Positively.com. And I would say with this, because there's so many components to separation issues, this will really, really help you. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stowell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.